Hey Emma, I have a question for you. What do you think is the biggest challenge that we face today? You know, Abhi, when I think about it, I don't believe it's a lack of resources or the lack of knowledge that is our biggest challenge. The biggest issue is the lack of correct information that's being shared, which means not all of us really understand what's going on in our world. We've come a long, long way together Through the hard times and the good We are currently facing a global pandemic, the first one of our lifetime. It is an inevitable outcome of our choices as a species, one that we could have prevented but chose not to. It's the choice we make to disregard our planet to cast aside the responsibility we carry to care for it. It's the choice to put ourselves before any other life form on this planet. Over time, it's gone from fulfilling our needs to catering to all of our wants. But as youth of this world, we have another responsibility. How prepared are we to face the consequences of these choices? Are we learning in a way that empowers us and prepares us for our future? Or is the truth that we are learning otherwise, misinformed, with accurate information, being hidden from us? Mm -hmm. I have to praise you like I should. Hey everyone, it's Abby. Yup, that's me. At the time I recorded this video, I was hiking in Olympic National Park, which is a park located in Washington State. As you hike, you're surrounded by some amazing scenery. Here, take a look. If you look around me right now, you can see this view of the mountains, and there are two things that stand out about it. Number one, its coloration, and number two, the stunning glaciers which adorn the entire range. This is where I want to pause, because as beautiful as it is, Olympic National Park has been changing for the worse. It's the same story as so many other places. Climate change. Glaciers are a prime example of the effects of climate change as they are indicators in the way that they react to changes in regional and global climate. Take the Anderson Glacier. This glacier receded to less than 10% of its former size between 1927 and 2009, and was essentially gone by 2015. We seem to forget that glaciers are a major source of water for us. Many of us are able to drink water every day because of them. However, not enough people are taking action to help preserve them. This underwhelming reaction is an indicator of a couple of underlying issues with our relationship with problems such as climate change. Number one, lack of education, meaning that the amount of information being shared with us is insufficient. And number two, misinformation, meaning that the quality of the information that we consume is suboptimal. Public funding for climate education is being cut. More states are pushing coordinated anti-science bills and misinformation campaigns are spreading in the form of mass mailings of fake climate science to K-12 schools. In other words, the world of climate education is an example of how lack of education and misinformation are being perpetuated and how they will directly affect my generation. There is a dire need for change in our education system. Uh -huh. Do you think that current events should be discussed in schools more? For example, climate issues, racial injustice, etc. And if so, can you list some that you think should be discussed and taught more? And what are your reasons for picking those? Yeah, I like this question. I mean, I liked all the questions you sent me, but this one I think is, is it sort of hits home for me as an educator. Like the reason why I teach children, the reason why I'm in schools is because I respect children greatly. This is Miss Nisa Frank, who is the head of Prospect Sierra School and an advocate for a new type of learning called project-based learning. 
It's an easy answer for me. I believe in project-based learning. I believe children and adults should be getting their hands on things, mainly because you start to solve problems that you can't solve when you're only engaging with a text. So when you're engaging with other people, I'm solving problems that are going to come up purely based around our dynamic as people. Project-based learning involves a dynamic classroom approach in which it is believed that students acquire deeper knowledge through active exploration of real-world challenges and problems. It's a learning method that's being implemented by educators around the world today, and quite successfully as well. Hafide and Mogatin, everyone. My name is Mercy Gilney, and I'll be introducing some project-based learning on Guam. So Guam has lots of project-based learning due to high schoolers having to complete 72 service earn learning hours before graduating. Micronesia Climate Alliance actually has lots of climate change programs, including a zero waste task force. And the club that I'm in, Marine Mania, actually introduces a lot of project-based learning as well, such as Guardians of the Reef, puppet shows, recycling after school, coastal cleanups, cleanups at bus stops, and many more. There's also tree plantings as well. On the most part, project-based learning is basically all around Guam. It's being offered outside of school and also inside of school. Airs to Our Oceans is a great example of project-based learning. The airs bring together youth to connect and learn through passion and purpose. We learn about real world issues and work towards solutions. We learn out in the fields with experts to become citizen scientists. We develop public speaking skills, make movies, write research papers, and critically think about these issues that we face. We're all subjects tied to one theme, empowering youth to protect our water. These are only a couple of examples of how project-based learning is being implemented. And with its success, we youth hope that it will become more widely used in the future for our sake. In conclusion, we as the youth of the next generation are worried, worried for our futures. It may be hard to accept, but this is the reality of our lives. The education system, as we know it, it is not sharing everything we need to know about our changing world. Current events aren't discussed as much as they should be in schools which can lead to oblivion about issues going on in the world. If we as youth discuss these issues more and engage with our world and the ongoing issues that our world faces, we'll be more educated and aware as we grow into our adulthood. As a result, we will be more knowledgeable about climate change, Black Lives Matter, etc., and probably be more driven to work on solving such issues. And if we are more driven and we learn more, then all of us have a greater shot at saving our planet. Sometimes when I look at this situation, it feels like we are dinosaurs standing around while an asteroid is hurtling towards us. Only we are not dinosaurs and this asteroid is the result of human choices. So let us choose differently.